Nice August days this week. It definitely won't be as hot as it could be. Temperatures are actually going to be going down into the upper 80s, and we'll have some slight chances of rain, but definitely not a washout. Plenty of sunshine still in store. I'll have all those details coming up. Right now on News Channel, recovery efforts in the wake of Hurricane Debbie. How one Scriven County man is dealing with the aftermath. And a tax issue at SRP Park, why a parking deck may be sold. As your news at 7 starts now. Watch from Television Park. This is WJBF News Channel 6 at 7. Everyone, you're watching News Channel 6 at 7. I'm Dee Griffin. Thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins in Emanuel County, where the community is remembering the life. Columbia County, a suspect in a domestic violence case, is recovering after a car chase with deputies. Investigators say during the chase on Roland Road, Bradley Gooding started shooting from his vehicle. Authorities say when he reached Old Louisville Road near Jamie Drive, he crashed and was found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Gooding is currently in the hospital. In a separate case, Brian Randall is behind bars charged with sexual exploitation of a minor. He is also accused of contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Time now for a first look at our weather with Chief Meteorologist Jennifer Tronti here today. It was another hot one, but it was a pretty sunny day. Yeah, definitely glad we're back to the sunshine. The weather will be nearly as active this week compared to last week when we were dealing with Debbie. Right now, when it comes to the rain, pretty much not a drop of it across the CSRA. We had one stray shower trying to form down in southeastern Aiken County. You can still see a little bit of that light rain just outside of Perry, but we're talking sprinkles. That is it. More showers outside of Barnwell County as well. Speaking of Aiken County, though, here's a look at the Momentum Center. It is pretty cloudy here. Uh, overall, giving you a little bit of a break from the sunshine. It is also getting a little bit cooler now. So the heat and humidity is becoming a bit more tolerable now that the sun is getting ready to set. 87 in Augusta, 91 in Barnwell, 90 in Millen, Aiken at 87, 92 in Wrightsville, and 88 in Edgefield. Dew points are getting higher, though. So just a couple hours ago, we were seeing a lot of 60s. Now we're up to a dew point of 76 in Augusta. So with that being said, the heat index still up to the upper 90s, feeling like 99 in a lot of places, but at least we no longer have that triple digit heat index. Some winds are coming in from the southwest up to around 7 miles per hour in Aiken County. Otherwise, winds are pretty light. And as for satellite and radar, we have some cloud cover to the north of us and the stalled frontal boundary right across the CSRA. So this will be responsible for a few pop-up showers and storms tomorrow afternoon but otherwise we're keeping things mostly dry tonight and a dry start to your Tuesday some low-level cloud cover possible though along with some fog temperatures will be in the low 70s now coming up I'll have a look at the future cast for those storms we'll be seeing tomorrow afternoon but back to you D all right thanks so much we'll see you in a few more minutes several parts of the area still dealing with the impacts of tropical storm Debbie some expected some surprising Maria Smith has the story while roads are open here in Rocky Ford, one local man shows us how impactful Debbie was on his property. To wreak havoc, that's all I can say. Aiden Mallard tells me on Tuesday of last week is when the tree in his neighbor's yard came down on his property due to heavy rains. So we woke up about 2.30 in the morning, our dogs started going crazy, and uh, we uh, got up and I decided to open the door and there was a uh, what I thought was a really large bush behind our vehicles. It was not a, it was not a bush. It landed on a truck in his yard, but says it easily could have landed on his home where he and his family were sleeping. It ended up destroying my truck, and I mean, it, it definitely wreaked havoc here in Rocky Ford. Mallard tells me Rocky Ford saw up to 14 inches of rain last week, and while it's dried out now, he has to clean up the damage. Rocky Ford Mayor Ken Mock released in a statement, at the height of the storm, we experienced flash flooding that even the elders in this town had never witnessed before. Water was waist deep, flowing across Highway 17 under the intersection at the caution light. The water ended up coming so, so far, the geese were actually swimming in my dad's backyard, and there's not supposed to be a pond back there. So they enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, obviously, it's receded now. Highway 17 was the road that was closed due to flooding, but has since reopened. There's nothing can keep us down here in Rocky Ford. We come together. We, we make sure everybody's happy, everybody's healthy. Mallard says while Debbie left a major impact on the area, he's glad his community can come together during times of need. In Scriven County, Bria Smith, WJBF.
News Channel 6. The recent flooding across Georgia and South Carolina in some areas. Well, some isolated storms around over the next couple of days, but overall plenty of sunshine this week, and on top of that, some cooler temperatures. I'll have a look at exactly how cool those temperatures will get coming up. I'm Austin Jackson, your guy in Augusta. If you've been injured, my team will get to work right away. And you don't have to pay us anything unless we get money for you. Next DT, are you... Forecast with WJDF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. I want to give a shout out to a very special person. This is Sierra. She was my weather intern all summer long. It went by super fast, though. It was great spending multiple days a week with Sierra. She started out not knowing much at all about meteorology, but by the end of it, started really helping us out and learned a whole lot. And yesterday, or the other day, was a very special day because she also brought her parents here and her grandfather, Bruce, and Aunt Lisa, and they got to see her skills in person. She got to do the weather forecast on the green screen for them, and it was just an awesome day. It was so great meeting all of you, and Sierra, thank you so much for spending the summer with me. I wish you luck as you go into your senior year of college. But right now, as we look at Live Viper 6, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have this one stray shower trying to develop in southeastern Aiken County. Really not turning into anything, though. You can see here on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam at the Amentum Center, nice and dry, just some cloud cover with 87 degrees, still feeling like 97 because of a dew point of 76. So plenty of moisture around, feeling very hot this evening, but we'll start to see a cool down later on this week, and we'll get into that in a moment. But right now, only 85 degrees in McCormick, 90 in Crawfordville, 95 in Louisville, Allendale, you're at 91, 90 in Bamberg, and 87 in Aiken. Here's the stalled frontal boundary across the CSRA. That is causing some showers and storms to develop in the Midlands, and for us, we'll see a better chance of rain tomorrow afternoon. You can see the drier air that was on the other side of that front is starting to push off to our south, and that moisture to the north of the front is starting to take over. So some pretty high dew points for now, but tomorrow we'll be right back to around where we were today. Low 90s in the afternoon, heat index around 100 degrees, some fog in the morning, and then the storms in the afternoon. Now things will change Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures dropping by several degrees, 88 for Wednesday, 89 on Thursday, and the heat index will be more so into the low 90s. So you don't have to worry about any heat alerts this week. We're not expecting that dangerous week, that dangerous heat to really over over the next 10 days. Now we do have the chance of some stronger storms tomorrow if you are in our South Carolina counties from Saluda down to Allendale. That's for the potential of some damaging wind gusts, but even that chance is very, very low. Tomorrow morning starting out dry just with the fog and low level cloud cover. Throughout the afternoon starting around 1, 2 o'clock, that's when Saluda down to Aiken County will see a few pop-up showers and storms. Some heavy downpours certainly possible could lead to some minor flooding. But overall, these storms will be moving pretty quickly. You can see by 5 o'clock, they're really starting to break apart. And then by 10, 11 o'clock at night, still a few stray showers, but nothing significant. No widespread rain expected. Wednesday morning, a cloudy but dry start to the day. And then in the afternoon, there comes a few more storms. Not expecting those to be strong, too severe. Possible more rain moving in late Wednesday night. But overall, a mostly dry week, and you do not have to worry about the tropics. And we deserve it here in Georgia and South Carolina after what we went through with Debbie. I am glad to report that we will be getting a break. Tropical storm Ernesto formed as of 5 o'clock today. Winds are at 40 miles per hour. Will be an issue across parts of the Caribbean with tropical storm warnings in effect. And if you plan on headed to Bermuda this weekend, I would consider canceling those plans because notice the track of Debbie pretty much taking it straight towards Bermuda as a Category 2 by this weekend. But that is quite a distance away from Georgia and South Carolina's coastline and really won't be an issue for the entire United States. So that is very, very good news. Our lows tonight will be in the low 70s and for tomorrow we will top off in the low 90s right around our average. In the 10-day forecast showing a 30% chance of rain both Tuesday and Wednesday. Mostly sunny skies Thursday and Friday with very low chances of rain as we continue to stay in those upper 80s, low 90s over the weekend. And even into next week, not many changes. Still very low rain chances in the low 90s. So I'm liking the weather this week, Dee. I'm so glad we're done with the tropics for ah, now. Yes, for now. I was, I'm afraid to say anything because I don't want to jinx it. Oh, I know. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Well, heat-related illnesses like heat exhaustion and heat stroke can happen within minutes of being locked in a vehicle. Sometimes they can be deadly. Now, according to noheatstroke.org, Georgia is fifth in the U.S. for hot car seat or hot 
car heat strokes over the last 25 years. Health officials advise parents to place a purse, wallet, or cell phone in the back seat when a child is riding with them. You know, it, it's a busy time of the year. Kids are going back to school. You're, you know, getting into a different routine. You've had the summer off. But just making sure that you get back into that normal school routine and making sure your kids are taken care of. Health officials say permanent neurological damage can happen to a child within minutes. So be very, very careful. We'll be right back. Hey, see you, Sir Good day. A serious accident creates a lot of right now problems. You're worried about your injuries, the medical bills, and whether you'll get stuck paying for it all. You shouldn't have to chase after a lawyer to get the help you need. With me, you won't have to. I'm Austin Jackson, your guy at Augusta. If you've been injured, my team will get to work right away. And you don't have to pay us anything unless we get money for you. Injured? Call Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy. 706-724-7224. According to a new poll of 2,000 Americans, 60 lazy days are necessary every year to feel rested and relaxed. The survey found that we take lazy days very seriously. More than 20% said they plan their lazy days in advance. Almost 70% like to spontaneously take their relaxation days. About 10% put do-nothing days on their calendars, and almost three-quarters of those surveyed said they don't tell others when they're taking a day to relax. A day to relax, what is that? One day I'll get one of those. I know, right? Yeah. 60 lazy days. What are these people doing I know. for work? What do they do, and where do they work, and are they hiring? Because, <laughs> wow. That seems like a lot. That's, That's like two months out of the year but of I, no work. You know, but I, I applaud them for knowing that they need those days for self-care and everything. Yeah. I applaud them for taking that time. Yeah, I think they're right yeah. that we yeah. ideally need 60 days. Now, yeah. is it possible? I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. Our 10 <laughs> forecast showing a pretty good forecast. It's looking mostly sunny, really. We do have a 30% chance of rain Tuesday and Wednesday, but not a washout. 92 still so still hot tomorrow, but down to 88 mm -hmm. by Wednesday. After you get out the, the 60 days, they include weekends. There you go. Okay. That's how you do it. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Nice August days for us this week. It's going to be cooler than normal. Definitely not as hot as it could be. We'll also have a few isolated showers and storms, but not a complete washout. I'll have all those details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 10, the summer floods recovery efforts in the wake of Tropical Storm Debbie. How one Scriven County man is dealing with the aftermath. And election season is coming up. We'll tell you how the Peach State is preparing as your News at 10 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 10 on MeTV. Good evening, everyone. I'm Graham Lee. Thank you so much for joining us. Jenny has the night off. Coverage you can count on begins with a check of the weather. We're going to start off with our chief meteorologist, Jenna Petraji, who's been tracking these storms. The tropical storm Debbie had a huge impact last week. Maybe some less, a little bit of rain this week. Let's find out. Yeah, that's exactly right, Graham. Definitely happy to report that our rain chances are much, much lower. Nothing like what we had last week. So right now on Live Viper 6, we really only have one area of rain, and that would be around the border of Vanburg and Barnwell counties. Other than that, it is dry. But here's a closer look there. We did have a couple lightning strikes, but overall pretty weak activity. This is outside of Williston and Elko, right along the border there. Light rain to the north of Denmark in Bamberg County. So all of this to the north of Bamberg, not impacting Barnwell. Our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam into Aiken, showing nice and dry conditions. Today, Augusta Bushfield did not pick up on any rain. High today was 95, so a hot Monday for sure. Low of 70 degrees. Right now, we're sitting in the low 80s, even some upper 70s in McCormick. 81 in Allendale, 78 in Louisville, Augusta right at 80 degrees, 82 in Gibson, and 84 in Lincolnton. The dew points are definitely pretty high, much higher than they were this afternoon. Now sitting in the middle 70s, 77 in Barnwell, 76 in Augusta, so that is some sticky air to work with tonight. Winds are very light, though, all under 6 miles per hour from the southwest. Satellite and radar showing some cloud cover to the north of the interstate with that one shower. And as we zoom out here, we now have this area of low pressure right across the CSRA along this stalled frontal boundary. That will be responsible for a few pop-up showers and storms tomorrow afternoon. 
But for tomorrow morning, starting things out dry. Some fog around, though, and some low-level cloud cover. Temperatures will be in the low 70s. Now, as we go into the rest of the week, we will be mostly dry. Very low rain chances, as I mentioned. But we do have some of those storms to talk about tomorrow. So be sure to stay with us for a look at our future cast for that. But back to you, Graham. All right, Jenna, thank you. We begin and continue now in the main chief. Well, stay with us. An unexpected consequence from last week's storms. How to deal with a surge in mosquitoes after the forecast. And some fog possible Tuesday morning, followed by some isolated storms in the afternoon. Still a very hot day, but the temperatures will be going down starting on Wednesday. I'll have all those details right after the break. What it takes to be a border ball cheerleader? We're looking for the area's best high school seniors. Tryouts for Team South Carolina will be held on Sunday, August 25th. Register now at wjbf.com slash cheer. Coleman Services carries in Augusta, Georgia. From the time I was a little girl, the only thing I ever dreamed about was forecasting the weather. This is just the trust you want. As you can see, everything's trees down. And so do not drive. I mean, I remember watching weather forecasts on TV while my friends were watching cartoons. I guess I was a bit of a nerd. When I grow up, my ambition is to become a successful meteorologist. So for me, being chief meteorologist here at News Channel 6, it's a dream come true. You can't always choose the weather, but you can choose your weather app. Go with the most accurate and most trusted, the Live Micro 6 mobile app. Download it today. Welcome back. It is a nice dry night. Really not much going on this evening. As we take a look now at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam at Augusta Regional Airport. 80 degrees, feeling like 86. Dew points are on the high end, sitting at 76. So very muggy conditions. Upper 70s to low 80s across the board. 81 in Sparta, 82 in Lincolnton, 81 in Allendale, and 80 degrees in Bamberg. Now we have the meteor shower going on over the next couple of days. This actually peaked last night, Sunday night. The best time to do it would be from midnight to around dawn. So it's possible if you go outside late tonight through around 5, 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, you could see it. So definitely keep that in mind. And if you want to learn more about it, check out the latest Beyond the Forecast with meteorologist Miller Hyatt. He breaks down the science behind this meteor shower. Always very interesting post from Miller on our website. Our satellite and radar are showing Pretty clear skies, so that's definitely good viewing conditions for the meteor shower. We do have some cloud cover to the north of us, scattered showers and storms to the east impacting the Midlands, and it's possible that we will have some fog tomorrow morning, so that can make those viewing conditions a little bit poor in some areas, very patchy fog. Temperatures in the low 70s to start, climbing into the low 90s in the afternoon. Another high heat index tomorrow, peaking at around 100 degrees, but notice some big changes to Wednesday and Thursday. Our heat index be more so how our high temperatures typically are for this time of the year. We're going to be at upper 80s, so more so like September temperatures over the next couple of days, and also some September feeling low temperatures. We'll be in the low 70s for now, but then going down to 67 for Friday morning. So still not that cool fall air, but getting a little bit closer to it. We do still have the chance of some isolated showers and storms tomorrow, primarily impacting our South Carolina counties from Saluda down to Bamberg. That's where we have the chance of some damaging wind gusts, though that chance is very low. Tomorrow at 7 a.m., there's the fog around with some low-level cloud cover. And then by the afternoon around 1, 2 o'clock, that's when we'll have some heavy downpours. Could lead to some minor flooding issues as well because these showers could linger for some time, dropping, dropping a lot of rain and with some thunder and lightning. By 5 o'clock becomes even spottier. Those showers and storms start to break apart. And by 11 o'clock, some of our southern counties could get some light rain. But definitely not a complete washout tomorrow and a dry start to your Wednesday morning as well, just pretty cloudy. And then in the afternoon, a few pop-up showers and storms around as well. So this pattern pretty much repeats all week long. We're also watching the tropics. At the 5 o'clock, we had tropical storm Ernesto form. This will not be impacting us, so that is very good news. It is going to be staying out to sea. Could be right over Bermuda, though, as a Category 2 hurricane, but no concerns 
when it comes to impacts for the Georgia or South Carolina coastline. 30% chance of rain Tuesday and Wednesday, going down to 88 degrees on Wednesday. Then a 20% chance of rain the rest of the week and even into next week. Not looking too hot and those chances of rain stay pretty low. So overall, pretty good forecast for us, Graham. Well, I'm glad that tropical storm is staying away from us. Also, yes. you caught me at low temperatures. we got football starting this Friday for yep. high school football. Cool temperatures. It makes me even more excited about this. Yeah, that's a good sign that that's football awesome. season is here. Absolutely. Well, speaking of the big storms following last week, well, coming up, the Atlanta Braves are looking for a win on the road. And a new sport is being added to the 2028 Olympics, and it's caused a lot of excitement in the CSRA. Here, Goldstein has sports. Next. CSRA, make your life a little easier. A soap opera. Sebastian. As long as you have this outdated bathroom, there can never be anything between us. Sandra, wait. I go to talk about Can this bathroom even be safe? Absolutely. Help, doctor. This bathroom needs intensive care, no doubt. But I can save it. What about new floor? He cabinets. My team can do it all. Take the drama out of your bathroom remodel. Call Tub Doctor for a free quote today. It's gonna be okay. Save a life with Hammond Hill Animal Hospital. Saving or neutering your pet promotes good health, prevents unwanted behavior, and decreases the occurrence of many reproductive cancers. Hammond Hills Animal Hospital, keeping your pets happy, healthy, and full of life. Sports coverage you can count on. Now that the 2024 Olympics have wrapped up in Paris, it's time to look ahead to the 2028 Summer Games in Los Angeles, where history will be made when flag football for both men and women makes its Olympic debut. Here in the CSRA, we've seen flag football grow in recent years, and in 2023, the Greenbrier Wolfpack won the state championship. Since then, they've had huge turnouts for summer camps run by the girls, and the popularity of the sport as a whole has been on the rise. It's something that makes head coach Daniel Jordan very happy, and he says the addition of the game to the Olympics sends a huge message to young athletes. I'm thrilled. I cannot wait to watch it. Um, I mean, it's just such a – we've seen how in Georgia it's just exploded in growth, and uh, girls from all over have loved it, and so – Excited to get to see the girls at that level and, you know, for our girls to be able to dream that, you know, what if, what if I can play in the Olympics one day? I think anytime we grow the excitement of the sport, we're going to continue to see, you know, that trickle down effect. And we've already seen that. We did a, a, a kids camp this summer for younger girls and we had incredible participation. I mean, we had like 60 girls between fourth and sixth grade. So um, they were just so excited and our girls mainly ran the camp and did a phenomenal job. They loved connecting with the younger girls, and it was just really neat to see. Coach Jordan also noted that their season starts in September, and he can't wait for his team to take the field. Over in the MLB, the Atlanta Braves have had a rough start to the month of August and a rough season overall when it comes to injuries, and it seems that the hits just keep on coming. The Braves announced on Monday that lefty relief pitcher A.J. Minter was placed on the 15-day injured list with inflammation in his left hip, the same thing that caused Minter to miss the entire month of June. But the lefty has been excellent as of late, allowing just three earned runs in 13 innings since the start of July. The Braves have said that they are not giving up on the hopes of making it to the postseason. And as things stand, entering play on Monday, the Braves hold a half-game edge on the New York Mets for the third and final wildcard spot in the National League. They opened a four-game series on the road against San Francisco on Monday, and we'll have updates on that series throughout the week. And finally, in Sunday's NASCAR Cup Series at Richmond, the race went into overtime, and in the final lap, Austin Dillon needed a win to make the playoffs. Dillon bumps into Joey Logano, which makes him spin out and hit the wall. Then Denny Hamlin tries to cut in front of Dillon, but Dillon then hits the back of him to move him out of the way. Dillon comes in first. Logano, not happy with how Dillon bumped his car, will take
take another look. Dylan comes up right behind Logano, spins him, then makes contact with Hamlin, sending him into the wall. The move has since caused some controversy online, with other racers furious at Dylan posting on social media on Monday. But he does earn the, his first win of the season, clinching a spot in the Cup Series playoffs. The next race will be the Firekeepers Casino 400 on Sunday the 18th. That does it for the And last but not least, a teacher in Pine Mountain Club came face to face with a bear in her own classroom. The experience is serving as a life lesson to students to very, very aware, bear aware. <laughs> her husband spoke with Robert Hagen on how the bears have crossed the line. It was a hair raising experience for one elementary school teacher when she came face to face with a bear in her Pine Mountain Club classroom. It was Monday evening, and she was alone. I went to the office to make copies, and when I came back to the classroom to open the door, the, the bear came charging towards the door, because I guess it, it was able to come in, but couldn't get out. Elaine Salmon teaches at the Peak to Peak Charter School. She just got new flooring when the bear broke in and ate the kids' earthquake kits full of granola bars. Which is funny, because there was an earthquake the day after. Neighbors told Sam and the bear is a juvenile male. She named him Bobby. His mom got killed and his other sibling got tagged. Sam and left her cell phone inside with the bear, so she scrambled to the office and called her husband. He got the bear out unharmed, but says the encounter is part of a bigger bear problem and it's only getting worse. We had about 719 wildlife incidents in our fiscal year, which ended June of this year. And... Um, 90-some percent were all bears. Ian Sari is a retired police officer and a military veteran. Now he specializes in bear deterrence with his business, Mountain Barriers. I've had encounters with, re with residents that have um, been sitting in the room watching TV, um, and the bear will tear through the screen and the window while they're in the room. Um, I've had residents come home to their house with a bear in the fridge, and they've yelled and screamed at the bear, and the bear just looked at them and just kept eating. I think the bear misunderstood. It read Mrs. <laughs> Salmon on the classroom and, and thought that's Stop. where he was supposed to go. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. even blame him. I, I can't mean, blame him. It's a mistake we all She was asking for I it. guess. <laughs> I don't know what she With a name like that, I mean, it, it could just attract some bears sometimes. Mm -hmm. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, our 10-day forecast showing around a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain over the next 10 days. Temperatures are going down. Still pretty hot and humid tomorrow, 92. Down to 88 for Wednesday, 89 for Thursday. And low temperatures even going into the upper 60s briefly, heating up a bit again next week. Thank you for joining us at 10. The news continues at the top of the hour on WJBF News Channel 6 at 11. Hogan's Heroes is next here on ATV. I'm Graham Lee. Jenny has the night off. Coverage you can count on begins in Emanuel County where the... It is time now for our first check of the weather. And for that, here's Chief Meteorologist Jennifer Chachi. Hey, Jenna. Hey, Graham. It's a nice dry night. Really not much going on this evening. You're taking a look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam at Augusta Regional Airport. It was a hot and humid day for sure. High of 95, putting us a couple degrees above average. New rainfall recorded at Augusta Bush Field. Temperatures right now are in the upper 70s to low 80s. Augusta sitting at 79, 81 in Allendale, McCormick, you're at 77, 79 in Swainsboro, Wrightsville at 80 degrees, 81 in Lincolnton, and 78 in Washington. Dew points are very high.
high. We're sitting in the mid-70s, even some upper 70s here and there, 78 down in Sylvania. That makes for a very sticky air out there. It's a very muggy summer-like night. Winds are coming in from the south, very light, only up to around 5 miles per hour in Aiken. As for satellite and radar, we had one spotty shower come through parts of Barnwell and Bamberg County. That has now fizzled out. And notice we have some cloud cover as well. Also some fog around the CSRA with this stationary front right across the area. And this is allowing for a lot of moisture, which could lead to that uh, low-level cloud cover and some fog overnight through tomorrow morning. So when you're headed out the door, a foggy start, temperatures in the low 70s, nice and dry though. But by the afternoon, starting around 1 o'clock, that's when you'll need to keep your eye to the sky as we will have a few showers and storms popping up. And some of those storms could become strong to severe with gusty winds. So coming up, I'll have a look at the future cast for that and everything you can expect for the rest of the week. But back to you, Graham. All right, Jenna, thank you. Several parts of the area are still dealing with the impacts of Tropical Storm Debbie, some expected and some surprising. Bria Smith has the story. While roads are open here in Rocky Ford, one local man shows us how impactful Debbie was on his property. To recap it, that's all I can say. Aiden Mallard tells me on Tuesday of last week is when the tree in his neighbor's yard came down on his property due to heavy rains. So we woke up about 2.30 in the morning, our dogs started going crazy, and uh, we uh, got up and I decided to open the door and there was a, a what I thought was a really large bush behind our vehicles. Was not a, was not a bush. It landed on a truck in his yard, but says it easily could have landed on his home where he and his family were sleeping. It ended up destroying my truck and, I mean, it, it definitely wreaked havoc here in Rocky Ford. Mallard tells me Rocky Ford saw up to 14 inches of rain last week and while it's dried out now, he has to clean up the damage. Rocky Ford Mayor Ken Mock released in a statement, At the height of the storm, we experienced flash flooding that even the elders in this town had never witnessed before. Water was waist deep, flowing across Highway 17 under the intersection at the caution light. But the water ended up coming up so, so far, the geese were actually swimming in my dad's backyard, and there's not supposed to be a pond back there. So they enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, obviously, it's receded now. Highway 17 was the road that was closed due to flooding, but has since reopened. Nothing can keep us down here in Rocky Ford. We come together. We, we make sure everybody's happy, everybody's healthy. Mallard says while Debbie left a major impact on the area, he's glad his community can come together during times of need. In Scriven County, Bria Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. If you drive by SRP Park, you might have noticed some orange sea signs on some decks nearby. The park is cool coming up, it's heating up, and that means a higher risk of heat-related illnesses. How you can stay safe in the rising temperatures when your coverage you can count on continues. And over the next few days, we're actually going to get a drop in temperatures. We'll be in the upper 80s, and we'll also see very low chances of rain, but some of the storms could, tomorrow could become strong and severe. I'll break down all the details after the break. The Live Viper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Welcome back. It is a very nice Monday night. No rain today. It was hot and humid, so we could definitely use some rain to cool us off. But after the rain we got last week from Debbie, I'm sure a lot of us, especially our southern counties, are enjoying this dry stretch of weather we'll be having this week. Our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam looking good outside the station. 79 degrees. Very muggy conditions, though. Dew point of 75. Winds are calm, feeling like 82. Some places still in the low 80s. 80 in Sparta and Gibson. 78 in Washington. 81 in Waynesboro. And 81 in Allendale. So right now the meteor shower is happening through the 13th. The best time to view this would be from around midnight to dawn. The peak of it was actually last night, but you still have a chance you could see it tonight if you head out late tonight or early tomorrow morning. And if you want to read more about the meteor shower, be sure to check out Miller Hyatt's latest blog, Beyond the Forecast series, series where he breaks down all the science behind meteor showers. Very, very interesting read, as always, from Miller. So if you want to head out tonight and try to see that meteor shower, there is a little bit of fog that could inhibit, inhibit your viewing. You can see some cloud cover as well with that fog on satellite and radar. We had a spotty shower develop earlier in Barnwell and Bamberg counties, but that has now faded away. We still have the stalled frontal boundary across the two state, though, and that will allow for a few more showers and storms to pop up tomorrow afternoon. You can see on water vapor, the dry air that we had earlier is now pushing down towards the south. 
we have more moisture moving in. So that's why we could see that fog tomorrow morning, plenty of low-lying moisture. 72 in the morning, climbing to around 92 in the afternoon with those scattered showers and storms. Heat index still a factor tomorrow, feeling like 100 degrees. Not as much of an issue, though, later on in the week. Actual temperatures dropping into the upper 80s, only feeling like the low 90s, which really isn't bad for the middle of August. And on top of that, low temperatures this time of the year are always in the low 70s, but we're actually going to get a break and go down into the upper 60s, as low as 67 for your Friday morning. So that'll be a little bit of some cooler fall-like air, you could say. Not quite fall, but a little bit closer. So tomorrow we do have that marginal risk of severe weather for Saluda down to Allendale counties. That's for the damaging wind gusts possible, but it's a very, very low chance. You'll see on our future cast here, there's the fog in the morning. Very dry start to the day though. Then by the afternoon, some showers and storms move in from the north. Looks like places like Saluda, Edgefield, and Aiken County will be impacted the most by this. Some heavy downpours that could lead to minor flooding concerns and once again those damaging wind gusts. By 5 o'clock, really not much activity, but we will still see a little bit of rain all the way through the 11 o'clock hour. Dry starts here Wednesday with the cloud cover, and then in the afternoon, we'll see a few more pop-up showers and storms. But this is about all it looks like pretty much all week long when it comes to the rain. So just hit or miss showers and storms. No major washout to worry about. And when it comes to the tropics, we can rest easy there as well. We have Tropical Storm Ernesto that formed at 5 o'clock. The 11 o'clock advisory showing winds still at 40 miles per hour. Tropical storm warnings in effect for Puerto Rico as it's expected to move over the island by tomorrow and then eventually out into the open Atlantic, impacting Bermuda though, unfortunately, as a Category 2 hurricane. But for us, that is great news. It is far, far away. No impacts for Georgia or South Carolina. Lows tonight will be in the low 70s. Our highs tomorrow will be in the low 90s. Another hot day, but we'll drop down into the upper 80s Wednesday and Thursday. Some of us even in the upper 80s on Friday. Then we'll be back into the low 90s over the weekend and very limited chances of rain each day. Back to you, Graham. All right, Jenna, thank you. Heat-related illnesses like heat exhaustion and heat stroke can happen within minutes of being locked in a vehicle. Sometimes they can be deadly. According to heatstroke.org, Georgia is fifth in the U.S. for hot car heat strokes over the last 25 years. Health officials advise parents to place a purse, wallet, or cell phone in the back seat when a child is riding with them. You know, it, it's a busy time of the year. Kids are going back to school. You're, you know, getting into a different routine. You've had the summer off. But just making sure that you get back into that normal school routine and making sure your kids are taken care of. Health officials say permanent, ooh, health officials say permanent neurological, neurological damage can happen to a child within minutes. We'll be back in just a few moments. But first, the winning numbers for tonight's South Carolina lottery are pick 303 and pick number 4. The winning numbers are 6879 and Fireball 4. There's a lot of choices. number one entertainment talk show has 15 and It's actually 16. Respectfully. Last season, Channel 6. We don't have to scream. We see. Or remind you of the thrill that comes from Crystal hot off the grill, hand seasoned and cooked to perfection. Crystal, daily deals all summer. Weather headlines on News Channel 6, brought to you by Hickson Roofing. My 5 for 6 mobile app. Download it today. WJDF sports coverage you can count on. Now that the 2024 Olympics have wrapped up in Paris, it's time to look ahead to the 2028 Summer Games in Los Angeles, where history will be made when flag football for both men and women makes its Olympic debut. Here in the CSRA, we've seen flag football grow in recent years, and in 2023, the Greenbrier Wolfpack won the state championship. Since then, they've had huge turnouts for summer camps run by the girls, and the popularity of the sport overall has been on the rise. It's something that makes head coach Daniel Jordan very happy, and he says the addition of the game to the Olympics sends a huge message to his young athletes. I'm thrilled. I cannot wait to watch it. Um, I mean, it's just such a 
we've seen how in Georgia it's just exploded in growth and uh, the girls from all over have loved it and so excited to get to see the girls at that level and you know for our girls to be able to dream that you know what if, what if I can play in the Olympics one day. I think anytime we grow the excitement of the sport we're going to continue to see you know that trickle down effect and we've already seen that. We did a, a, a kids camp this summer for younger girls and we had incredible participation. I mean we had like 60 girls between fourth and sixth grade. So um, they were just so excited. And our girls mainly ran the camp and did a phenomenal job. They loved connecting with the younger girls. And it was just really neat to see. Coach Jordan also noted that their season starts in September. And he can't wait for his team to take the field. Over in the MLB, the Atlanta Braves have had a rough start to the month of August and a rough season overall when it comes to injuries, and it seems that the hits just keep on coming. The Braves announced on Monday that lefty relief pitcher A.J. Minter was placed on the 15-day injured list with inflammation in his left hip, the same thing that caused Minter to miss the entire month of June. But the lefty has been excellent as of late, allowing just three earned runs and 13 innings of work since the start of July. The Braves have said that they're not giving up on the hopes of making it to the postseason, and as things stand entering play on on Monday, the Braves hold a half-game edge on the New York Mets for the third and final wild-card spot in the National League. They opened a four-game series on the road against the San Francisco Giants on Monday, and we'll have updates on that series throughout the week. And finally, in Sunday's NASCAR Cup Series at Richmond, the race went into overtime, and in the final lap, Austin Dillon needed a win to make the playoffs. Dillon bumps into Joey Logano, which makes him spin out and hit the wall. Then Denny Hamlin tries to cut in front of Dillon, but Dillon hits him in the back and moves him out of the way. Dylan comes in first. Logano not happy with how Dylan bumped his car. We'll take another look at this. Dylan comes up right behind Logano, spins him, then makes contact with Hamlin, sending him into the wall. The move has since caused some controversy online, with other racers coming out on Monday furious at Dylan. But he does earn his first win of the season, clinching a spot in the Cup Series playoffs. The next race will be the Firekeepers Casino 400 on Sunday the 18th. That does it for sports. We'll be right back. It's a room to go. go. Well, according to a new poll of 2,000 Americans, 60 lazy days are necessary every year to feel rested and relaxed. The survey found that we take lazy days very seriously. More than 20% said they plan their lazy days in advance. Almost 70% like to spontaneously take their relaxation days. About 10% put do-nothing days on their calendars. And almost three-quarters of those surveyed said they don't tell others when they're taking a day to just relax. I'll tell you what, lazy days are a must for me, too, because i got to have my time off because I've experienced burnout. Yeah. I know mm. it's like... Do you yeah. plan your lazy days, though, or do they just happen to you? They just kind of happen. They just kind of yeah. happen? Yeah. I, I plan, plan mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm a planner, too. I'm one of those that writes uh, do nothing <laughs> yes. on the calendar. Yep. Well, we're going to see a few showers and storms over the next couple of days. Temperature is hot tomorrow, but then cooling down Wednesday. Thank you for watching us. Have a good night. Attorney George Sink. 